Yo, how's it hanging gamers? I'm Benny and today is exciting. Well, for me anyways. Because today I'm going to be answering the question of if you can beat Final Fantasy VII with only base equipment. Meaning that whatever a character starts with is all that they can use throughout the entire run. Items are fine, but switching out anything other than that is a no-no. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Now, for this challenge, uh, all of Midgar is pretty much the same, with some slight hiccups here and there. But we start off the same as usual, we grab Barret, we would run down, fight the Guard Scorpion. Standard operating procedures here, spells, basic attacks, limit breaks when we get them, and all's good, for the most part. Uh, I mean, obviously, you know, wait for the tail to go down before you attack, and that way you avoid all of the uh, counter attacks it can do. But, yeah, the Guard Scorpion really, uh, really not that difficult. Um, the majority of the first part of the game isn't that bad. But, after the Guard Scorpion, you know, gotta run away from the Bomb Blast, and the Aerith down in the streets and buy a flower from her for reasons. And after that, we make a run through the town, fight a couple of Shinra outposts just so we can get some experience. It's easy, it's quick. And I feel like we're going to need all the experience we can get. With that, we jump on the train, and now we're at 7th Heaven. Sector 7 is all storyline, but, you know, we're going to give Tifa a flower to make her like us better, and listen to Barrett talk for a while while we argue with him about our money. Other than that, I mean, I'm probably going to say it a lot. This challenge is not really a challenge until after you get out of Midgar, so... Really, I'm only going to focus on the boss fights, otherwise there's going to be a lot of filler, and this video is just going to take forever. So we plant the bomb in Sector 5, run away, and encounter the Airbuster, who President Shinra has so graciously dropped on us. And, I mean, the fight isn't terribly hard. Uh, we just have Cloud spamming Bolt the whole time, while Barret and Tifa attack and switch off on healing duties uh, when their limit breaks fill, and he goes down pretty easily. You know, the only thing that was really concerning was his big bomber, which dealt a lot of damage to us. But after that, we fall down into the church where we meet Aerith again, help her escape from Reno and the Shinra. We do end up messing up the first drop though, which you'll see here, right there. And luckily that was the only one we messed up. I should also note, I haven't played this game in quite a few years, and I'm not really doing a prepared run, but we escape, and we cross-dress with Cloud, find Tifa in a fun dungeon, and learn that Shinra is going to drop the plate on Sector 7 before getting thrown down to the sewers to fight Raps. And this fight goes pretty smoothly, I mean now we have a heal bot in the form of Aerith with her limit breaks and our potions, since she can't deal any damage whatsoever. But we more than make up with that, uh, with Cloud and Tifa, who are just pummeling away at him from the front row. Next up, we have to run through the train graveyard, where eventually Cloud learns to cross slash limit break, and now it's off to fight Reno. Which is always annoying, as Reno uses Pyramid, which stops a character from acting until another party member breaks it. But, with minimal effort in managing the pyramids, we beat full red hair down and swing away to safety before the plate drops. Once Reno is finished, we, uh, it's time to climb up the Shinra HQ, so we have to stop and restock on all of our healing items, pick up some grenades, before we break out our new permanent party member, Red, or as we call him, Nanaki, and end up fighting the first of the Genova experiments. This fight goes pretty smoothly, uh, Red with his fire magic, and just focusing on the main husk, we take it down on the first try, and get to move on with the rest of our adventure. And I'm gonna note here that the reason why Red is going to be a permanent party member is because he is one of the few members that we get that actually comes with magic materia, and we're only going to have three this entire run. So he's pretty much indispensable. <laughs> Not to mention his limit break is very, very useful. 
But we break him out, break Aerith out, and we move on to the escape plan, which ends up with the elevator fight. So we have Aerith on healing duty and also lobbing grenades. She is our team's mortar, while Barret is shooting and Red cast fire. Over and over and over again until both of these bosses are done. And so after many grenades and firebombs later, Red finally hits its limit and we're done with the fight. Now on to Rufus. The Rufus fight starts off with his dog throwing up a barrier around him which now makes our attacks that much more ineffective. So we take out the dog first, heal up Cloud, and proceed to just throw spell after spell after spell at him because even our limit break is doing less damage than our magical output. Otherwise, Rufus is in a difficult and we move on to the Motorball, which is the final boss in the Midgar section of Final Fantasy VII. Meaning, after I beat this boss, everything flipped the script on me and just completely turned around. It got absolutely ridiculous. But first, we gotta turn our attention back to this big ol' bundle of joy here, who, after the other boss fights, I was running a little low on the healing items, and... We just about couldn't beat him. But a few well-timed limit breaks later, and eventually we won our freedom. So, uh, with no materia allowed to be equipped, we have to risk running across the swamp, and the Zalem doesn't like that. So he kills us, and we have to spend a little bit of little bit of time grinding for a while before we even have a chance at getting across the swamp. Uh, we make use of Barret's Limic to reduce the Zalem's MP to zero and Red's Lunatic High for haste and evade up for the party while setting everybody to the back row for less damage. And it goes pretty well, um, until Cloud and Barret both get knocked out, leaving Red to finish the fight on his own. Which he does a good job at because he is the bestest boy ever. And now it is off to Junin, where we have to fight Bottom Swell. Not bad. I'm actually a little surprised at how little damage like the actual bosses are dealing to us right now. Uh, but Bottom Swell does have one annoying gimmick, and that is his Bubble spell, where if you get affected by Bubble, it's like reverse region. You just constantly lose damage until you get rid of it. So we end up beating Bottom Swell, pick up Shiva for our Pokedex, and board the ship to head to the Gold Saucer where we get thrown into prison and have to fight Dine, which goes very quick as he is not a person that likes having Molotovs thrown in his face by Barret. We get the buggy, pick up a hitchhiking UV, and head to Cosmo Canyon where we fight the easiest boss in the game. Uh huh. Next up is Nibbleheim where we end up fighting our very, 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 very fun friend. I hate this fight. As I said before, I have not played this game in four or five, somewhere, a couple years. And I completely forgot how the lost number fight works. So I ended up having to do him twice. The first time, because I killed the first phase with physical damage, which made him turn into his physical mode and absolutely steamrolled us. Second time, we were a lot more careful about that and the fight actually went very smooth because his magic potency was not up to snuff to finish us off. So we finished him off, got the basement key so we can get Vincent. See, I thought the Materia Keeper was weak to fire and absorbed lighting. Not the case, so Vincent did nothing but heal him the entire time he was transformed, which made this fight stretch on forever. Eventually we beat him, and proceeded off to the Temple of the Ancients where we bashed our head against another wall, literally, broke another couple of hours. See, the Red Dragon in the Temple of the Ancients was not all that difficult compared to the demon wall. And this is the point 
Or I thought this run was just gonna come to an end. So we ran in circles in the dragon's room for a while, getting a couple of levels before trying again. And we got a good run eventually, with some lucky targeting by the wall that allowed us to get the last little bit of damage that we needed in to make him crumble into dust. And it was so satisfying. This guy was an absolute nuisance. And I wish I could tell you he was the biggest headache in this run, but he's not. He was easy, compared to the other things that come later. So, getting back on track here, um, we keep our healing above par and eventually Red gets his limit that allows us to finish the fight. Now we're off to the City of the Ancients to fight Genova Life, who packs a huge punch but we have the power of unbridled rage on our side. After watching our favorite flower girl get stabbed and making us sad. Now, Genova Life has a very strong attack called Aqualo. It's basically a nuke. So if you can survive it, you're good. Because she only does it when she's close to death, I'm pretty sure. Don't quote me on that. But that's the case here. We barely survive it, and Cloud finishes her off. So we hit our mid to late 30s, and now we're off to Gaia's Cliff, where we need to put down Schizo. Shizo? Shizo. I don't know how to say it. But we have to do that to get to the Northern Cave, and the first fight does not go well. He deals way too much damage for us right now. So we run in circles around back at the Chocobo farm to get some limit breaks, and we also level up our spells to their third tier, which helps a lot. Considering that Schizo, Shizo, Shizo, Shabadabadabada is weak to elements, ice and fire, on alternating heads. Meaning, if you target the wrong head with one of the spells, you'll actually end up healing that head instead of damaging the boss, who has two health pools effectively. And this is why Red has to be a permanent member of the party. Now that we have all of our spells to level 3, and Red and Cloud are the only two members that have magic materia, those two are our highest damaging combatants. Granted, after looking into it a little bit later on, I probably would have been better off if I kept Barrett in the party. But Vincent has cool transformations. Now, anyways, to get back on track here, uh, the fight's not going to last too much longer. Cloud and Vincent are just putting out way too much damage for him, and we beat Schizo. Uh, and then we're on to Genova. So the main strategy for Denova death here uh, involved making my party depressed. Uh, see, this run taught me a lot about how the different systems in the game actually worked. Especially what a lot of items do. Like Hyper and Tranquilizers don't just affect your limit gauge which is what I always believed. They have other purposes, other uses. And this is the part where I fully realized that. So anyways, we beat Genova, continue through the cutscene, escape Junin, uh, go on the hunt for some huge materia, and with Sid as the party leader, we drive off ultimate weapon as we go back to visit Tifa and Cloud in the deal. Sadly, losing Sid in the process, and this is the only time he's used in the run. Now we uh, get control of Cloud again, and we go back on the hunt for the huge materia, uh, which leads us to the carry armor fight, which I don't remember being difficult, but apparently others have had issues with it. So I was a little surprised that using still only starting equipment uh, we didn't really have much of a problem um, especially with our with our spells being leveled the way they are 
uh, we're just throwing out a lot of damage. And Vincent got to use his new limit, just cause, why not? Hellmasker is not really a great limit for him. I mean, it's useful for basic enemies, uh, but against bosses it's pretty much useless. Now Midgar goes and gets attacked by a diamond weapon, and we intercept it, and deal with him by using our level 3 spells and limit breaks. During the downtime prior to this, we also got Vincent's level 4 limit break, and let me tell you, chaos is nice. Only downside to Vincent's limits is really that we lose control of him, um, but he does deal probably the most damage out of the party, so it's a decent trade-off in my opinion. Uh, hi, uh, Benny from the future here, and let me just tell you, not a great trade-off. Not good. Bad things happen. But with Diamond Weapon now uh, dealt with, uh, we need to parachute into Midgar and have a rumble with the Turks in the subway system. Now, we focus all of our efforts on Reno in this fight, because once you deplete his health bar, they retreat, and he has the least amount of health. That's good for us. Um, so we just keep pummeling him with spells and attacks and make them run away, because Elena is dangerous. Her mock punch is the reason I had to do this fight twice. Oh, not to mention, each of them have different elemental resistances, so your spells can heal them. Found that out the hard way too. But with the Turks out of the way, we move on to bigger things. Literally. We encounter Heidegger and Scarlet in their anti-weapon mobile suit, which is silly because it can't defeat a depressed group of edgelords and a dog. How's it gonna stand up to the weapons? But really, the fight's just super annoying because it doesn't deal enough damage to be a threat to us, and it just has a monstrous health bar. This fight, I want to say, took about an hour. Like, before I edited it down, this fight alone since I recorded the whole thing and I shouldn't have, took up about two-thirds of the entire timeline. It was dumb long. And just this segment alone, like, I've already said everything I have to say about the fight. It was not a difficult fight. It was just taking forever. The only difficult part about this fight was that he ate up a lot of my ethers before I finally beat him. And then we get to Hojo. And this man, this absolute lunatic, was actually the reason why I almost didn't finish this. This was the most frustrating part. These two bosses, back to back. The Proud Claw was just annoying because of his massive health bar and our minuscule amount of damage that we could deal. But Hojo was... He was... He was a monster. I cried. Not really. But I almost did. So many different status effects. So many different strategies to try. And none of them worked. And he kept laughing at my face as I had to read the unskippable dialogue before his boss fight 20 plus times. And each time I went in thinking, this new way is gonna work. And no, no, none of them did. I honestly have no idea how I beat him. It just happened. His phase three is the most s s dumb thing in the world. Like, the dude gets four attacks every turn. How am I supposed to keep up with that? The most I could heal in an action is 500 HP. We don't have cure. We don't have 
ribbons or any accessories, right? Base equipment. Everybody's going into this raw dogging it, right? And this man is just throwing out sleep, poison, slow, darkness. So in, in the rare instances that I can actually try to attack him, I miss a lot. And that's only if I get the chance to, if I'm not throwing away my entire reserve of items to try and just keep everybody alive. I was on the phone with one of my friends during this boss fight, like throughout the majority of the duration I was running him, and every time I was getting frustrated, she laughed a lot, which in turn just made me even more frustrated until this happened. This must have been like a bug in his AI or something because he was not letting up and this was a fluke. I beat him on a fluke. And I thought, that's it. That's the hardest thing this game has to offer. And no. No, it wasn't. One shot. So the Northern Cave is way outside of our power level at this point, And we can be one shot consistently. So I had a new problem. Our healing items can't keep up with the damage. And we can't buy anything higher than high potions. So, I went to Wutai. Why? Well, you probably already saw it, but there's a mob that spawns up on the mountains that drops X potions very consistently, as well as Lunar Curtains, which we can use to get access to Barrier. So, after staying here for a while and grinding out items, we decided to go kill Ultimate Weapon. And not for the reason that you usually kill Ultimate Weapon, uh, you know, to get Cloud's final sword and all that. We did get it, but we can't use it. Uh, but he does drop a lot of experience points, and we needed experience points. So after we played Catch the Magic Dragon, we also decided to grind around in Nagelnica for a bit to get even more experience points, and as well as trying to get light curtains, but the drop rate was absolutely horrid, so we just went to the northern crater and gave it a try. Next up, bottom of the crater, Genova fight. This Genova, not really a big threat unless you let her countdown fully diminish, in which case she throws Ultima at you, which will probably kill us instantly. So we can't let that happen. Uh, really, the game has turned from re repeatedly hitting the attack button over and over to repeatedly throwing out the same spells over and over. Now, we did go into this prepped up a bit. Uh, we threw Sadness on Cloud and Red, so they would take reduced physical damage. And since we're not dealing physical damage, we don't really have to worry about that debuff. Um, and then Hyper on Vincent so that we can get access to his transformations faster if we need them. Other than that, we beat her before the countdown ended, so we didn't worry about Ultima. And we got our party to level 70, except for Vincent. He's a little bit of a late bloomer. And we moved on to the big man himself. Bizarro boy. I mean, really, Bizarro isn't all that bad. He's the first phase of the big guy after all, so he does not do too much. He's just got a goofy mechanic based on a bunch of arbitrary stats that are calculated outside of his encounter um, to determine how many parties you need to use to beat him. For us, it was two. With that being said, it doesn't mean he's any less annoying than usual because you can't actually kill him. Well, I guess you can but we can't. Our damage output is too low. Until you destroy his core, which heals him whenever he takes damage, and, and yeah. He can't out damage our healing, just like we can't out damage his healing. So we have to destroy the core, meaning we have to send in the other party, which consisted of Sid, Tifa, and Barret all hyped up on adrenaline and ready to use their level 1 limits. Basically, the strategy was wait for him to attack you, 
Let the limit gauge fill. Use the limit. Heal. Repeat. For all three of them. Until the core was destroyed on their side. And we switched back to the main party and never bothered them again. So after this lengthy process, the big guy finally goes down. Which is a good thing because that means we beat one of the three phases and we're that much closer to beating the game. Bad thing, we now get to face off against Safer Sephiroth. Which is the biggest gag in the whole game because he is not safe. Dude has moves that'll drop you to, to 1 16th of your health bar. Oh, and just watch. Watch what happens here. After we get ourselves set up, nice and, you know, good. We have our barriers out. We have hero drinks going. He demolishes us on the first try. And I expected it. I didn't remember what all his moves did when I first went into this and got myself out of my rotation very easily. But from this point forward, it is just a very big light show because we get our initial setup, we have our sad boys back, Vincent's limit is ready to pop. Spoiler alert, we don't use it this time. He is our item guy. He is our HM hound at the moment. Because if we transform him, <laughs> we lose one third of our action economy. And we can't afford that in this fight as everybody has to share the healing duty while Cloud and Red have the responsibility of dealing as much damage with our spells as possible. And that is what this fight is. It is holding actions to see the result of what his attacks do, throwing out spells in between healing and Red's limit break is absolutely fantastic in this fight as it's allowing us to get multiple heals off before Sephiroth attacks us. That is what keeps us in this fight. So we revive Vincent at this point, we re-haste the party, and we also throw out a Meteor Rain to deal a decent chunk of damage to him. Um, now that everybody's re-hasted, our action economy is back on par with what we need it to be. And we just keep this rotation up all the way through the rest of the fight. Now here Sephiroth flies up, uh, getting ready to launch Supernova. But first, he hits Vincent with Pale Horse. And Vincent gets turned into a frog. But we can't heal him because it would throw our rotation out of sync. And Vincent doesn't need to be a human anyways. Since all he's doing for us is throwing items out at Red and Cloud. And we can't use his limits for the reason that we've described before of losing control of him, which would just throw our entire rotation out of whack. Now, the same thing happens to Cloud here, and just there it is. And we instantly cure him of that because Cloud can't be a frog. So we heal up Cloud, Red dies, and we launch our final Meteor Rain to finish the fight. In the end, one man, one dog, and one frog ended up standing at the precipice and defeating the ultimate life form to save the planet. And with that, Cloud falls into the life stream where the final avatar of Sephiroth awaits for us to close the distance. We square off and launch our final limit break, Omnislash. Which, this is the first time seeing it done with the Buster Sword. Like, it's probably out there somewhere, but this is the first time I've seen it. And it was, it was, it was kind of cool. As we watch Sephiroth fade off back into the live stream, we have completed Final Fantasy VII with only base equipment. And what a journey it was. The whole thing took about, the final time on the game was 40 hours and 7 minutes. So just over 40 hours, which I feel like it was pretty short, but considering we, we only did the main story and we didn't do any of the side quests or hunt for 
other characters' things, like the final weapons or limit breaks. That's not bad in the end. And hey, if you stuck around to the end of this whole thing, or may, even if you skipped to the end of it, if you're here hearing this message, I just want to say thank you. This was my first video or first time doing anything like this, and it was a lot of fun, and I learned a lot, especially about what to do and what not to do during editing. So with that being said, thanks again, and if you liked it, why not just put a like down and tell me what you thought about the run down in the comments. Also, if you have any uh, anything you want to see, any other kind of runs you want to see, I really want to do a lot more challenge runs. And the only thing I have planned so far is another run of Final Fantasy VII, but to see if I can do it in the canon timeline, which I believe according to the to livestream.net, all the events of Seven took place over 41 days. And I would be using the Echo S mod that has the calendar and the day and night cycles. So let me know and I'll see you later.